Hi everyone, I'm Philip. I'm at Critics, an, an account executive where I'm responsible for the strategic growth with new and existing partners. And I'll be talking today about smart crits, what their status quo is and what we need in the future in order to implement them in our existing crit architecture. Um, I'll be speaking about three um, small segments today. First of all, about the overall topic of the energy transition, what, this, what, they are, or what its implications are on the crit infrastructure. Second, I'll be talking about um, trends that we at CritX currently see with our partners in the energy market and why they are critical steps towards the implementation of smart crits. And as a third step, I will then explain how these preceding small steps, these critical trends that we see at the moment already, will in the future then evolve into the setup of, of smart crits in the wider energy market. And um, to start with the topic of the energy transition, I assume this is not entirely new to you. And um, we need to transition from fossil fuel, uh, fossil fuels to renewable green electricity in order to become CO2, CO2 neutral in our energy market system. Um, overall, we have three segments of the energy market. The first would be power, electricity, where it's a quite centralized market scheme. So we have nuclear um, plants, we have lignite um, fired power plants who actually yeah, burn lignite in order to produce electricity. Then the electricity is transported towards our homes where we consume them. The second would be heating. Again, we have a centralized production scheme where we produce natural gas, oil, etc., ship them to our homes, to our industries, where we use them to heat our home or our yeah, processes in the industry. And a third step would be mobility, where again we use yeah, centralized production schemes for petrol, diesel, etc., to fuel up our cars, drive them by again yeah, firing fossil um, fuels. In the future, it will be um, green, electric, renewable, and also yeah not centralized, but decentralized, meaning that we produce electricity where it is consumed. I will come to that in a second step. But also we heat our homes with electricity, with heat pumps, and we also drive our cars with electricity, with electric vehicles, and they are all connected. And of course, we can also store electricity in household storage, batteries. And this is actually all what smart grids are about, right? The smart connection of electricity production, storage, and consumption in order to overcome yeah, the shortages that we will have in the future in regards to the production of electricity. This we can see here. So um, it used to be a quite supply side driven flexibility that we had in the electricity market, meaning if we know that the electricity consumption will increase in the evening, we simply increase production from lignite fired power plants, nuclear power plants, whatever it is. But in the future, we produce and generate electricity from wind farms, solar panels, etc., and we cannot steer when the wind is blowing and the sun is shining. We have quite intermittent production, so we need to control the, the flexible demand side. So the flexibility will move from the supply side to the demand side, and the energy transition is not only fossil to renewable, but also supply side flexibility to demand side flexibility. And in order to have flexibility on the demand side, which you do not have today, people will start cooking at 6 p.m. if we tell them to do or not. So we need some kind of steerable assets on the demand side that we can control. And um, here we zoom in on two trends that we have. And um, the first one would be um, yeah, the smartification and electrification of households. And the second would be charging infrastructure. So charging our cars at supermarkets, at work, at the highway, wherever it is. And these two new market trends can be implemented in a way that we can control them to meet intermittent supply as well. Zooming in on the household case, um, as mentioned, we have a couple of flexible production and consumption assets there. We will produce electricity at home with household photovoltaic solar assets. We will store electricity with household electricity storages. And we also will have new and steerable um, yeah, consumers at home, like for instance, heat pumps for heating our homes and EV chargers, so chargers for our electric vehicles. And which can also be organized in a way that we can control them. Um, but first of all, the first trend within the trend of um, smartification of our home would be we need to make all those assets transparent. We have to um, yeah, bring them online to see what, what is happening and afterwards we can start optimizing them. But first we need to see what is happening, of course. A second step then is optimizing for self-consumption. So using as much electricity from your own PV panel 
um, to charge your car, to heat your home with your heat pump and shifting these flexible times. I mean, you will probably have your car at home for a couple of hours overnight or also over the, the day. Usually a car stands for 22 hours per day. So you have quite some flexibility to charge it when actually electricity is generated from your PV panel. And so we can shift these kind of and charging times or heat pump times when they are on and to times where electricity is produced or generated also at home. Um, a second active optimization um, step would be to optimize for flexible time of use tariffs. This will be implemented as soon as we have smart meters, which is not the case in Germany today, but we will soon be there. Um, in all of the rest of Europe, we already have smart meters. And so also private residential electricity consumers can make use of flexible electricity prices because prices, prices will increase and decrease over the course of the day always dependent if we have abundant electricity from wind parks, solar PV panels, or if electricity is um, scarce because yeah, wind is not blowing and sun is not shining. And here we can control heat pumps and EV chargers to go on when electricity prices are cheap and thereby economically incentivizing the end customer, but also meeting the demand with the supply from centralized production schemes like wind farms. And a fourth step would be if this kind of incentivized, more passive scheme is not um, sufficient, we can then also bring flexibilities to flexibility markets like virtual power plants or grid operators, and they can actively control these household assets um, to be shifted to times where the grid is not stressed, where we have a, yeah, abundant electricity, and thereby also meeting the demand side flexibility with the uh, non-controllable and um, supply from wind and solar. Um, yeah, to come to the next trend of charging infrastructure, um, same here, we have a couple of EV chargers as, flex as flexible assets, maybe a couple of PV panels on the roof of the office, and we need to optimize those, or we can use the flexibility to optimize those. Um, first step here would be, of course, again, to bring these assets online to, um, yeah, to have flexibility, or to have transparency to see the flexibility and then optimize for this flexibility. This would be, um, first of all, of course, smart charging. And um, we need smart charging because the grid infrastructure itself, the physical grid connection point, is not made to um, supply a couple of chargers or high power charts at the highway. Usually offices have been built 10, 20, 30 years ago, and the grid connection point is not made for the huge consumption of EV chargers. And here we can make use of the flexibility of the charging process. If you drive to work, you only drive for a couple of, yeah, maybe five kilometers within a city and you stay for eight hours at work. So there's no need to immediately charge at full power, but you can stretch and postpone the charging cycle over the course of the day. Same at home or a supermarket, usually there's no need to charge at full power immediate, immediately. And here we can stretch the charging cycle to accommodate with the physical grid limit but also to move um, charging cycles to um, the time where the PV panel on top of the office produce electricity. And here also charging infrastructures can be as autark as possible, or at least to be as self-sufficient as possible. Usually autark here to 100% is not feasible, but to be as self-sufficient as possible, to have as little impact as possible on the grid. And then again, if these kind of passively incentivized schemes will not work sufficiently, we can again enable um, flexibility marketing um, yeah, schemes like virtual power plants or grid operators to immediately and actively control charging sites as well to meet grid stress times or production times with consumption times as well. Mm. This is actually what we are doing with our partners at Critics, right? So our partners um, install PV panels, EV chargers, household batteries and heat pumps at private residential households or charging infrastructures at supermarkets on the highway, high power charging or at work. And they use our software to optimize the two steps I explained um, yeah, just before on site, but then also we bring all the information of those sites and also the ability to control those sites and the assets on site to our platform Xenon. And from there, um, we have a couple of options how to interfere with the system or how to connect. So we can provide smartphone apps to end customers, to the homeowner of the household, to see when is electricity um, produced, when do I want to charge my car, you can set it in your app. But the same would apply for the service provider. 
So our companies, usually utilities, charge point operators, they can also use our front ends to see what is happening on site. And then they can overcome these kind of shortages themselves or can simply see if systems are online, offline and provide service and maintenance. And the same interface could be used towards virtual power plant providers like Luminasa, Next Kraftwerke, quite interesting companies as well. And they can access also small scale flexibility assets like home chargers and home storage batteries and not only large scale flexibilities like wind farms and solar uh, plants. And uh, fourth step of a fourth possibility would be also grid operators, of course, speaking about smart grids, they can also use our interfaces to immediately control those local assets. And if the assets are not only connected virtually, but also physically, imagine a city part where you have a school, a, um, yeah, a couple of offices, supermarkets, maybe households, they are all connected virtually, but they are also physically adjacent to each other. Then we can also, from the virtual software perspective, control that they share electricity in their city neighborhood and yeah, have as little impact on the grid and also as a physical part of the city to reduce the impact on the grid as possible by shifting loads to times where intermittent production is abundant. Thank you for the attention and of course if you are keen to have a further exchange always reach out and if you're also keen to get practically involved we are hiring and recruiting globally and please feel free also to reach out we have plenty of open um, options and plenty of open work positions and I would be free and happy to help and assist to see where we can make this happen. Thank you.